Cheerios. Yes. One another day, week. One day left. One day left. Thirsty Thursday. My day job, guys. <laughs> Let me tell you. Not nearly as fun as Monero. <laughs> uh, this is fun. right. Isn't this like this is just the best job ever when we do Monerotopia, Monero Talk. It's good stuff. It's awesome. Anybody that's out there looking to get involved in Monero, highly recommend you just start working on it. Fun time. Very rewarding work, I'd say, compared to most things I've done. Oh, yeah, in very life. interesting. There's always something <laughs> going on. Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who, who do we got on? Well, we have. Uh, Justin. I'll pretend I don't know, even yeah, though I already know. I guess we'll first <laughs> introduce Justin because no one knows you. Hi, Justin. Why, hello, you two. I'm Justin. I do some various Monero stuff. Recently, I've been flooding in DEF CON work, but it'll be good that you two will be there to watch me as everything unfolds while, while you know, watch it live. So looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, looking forward What's to the, uh, what, what should we expect? Well, this year, the Cryptocurrency Village, sadly not the Monero Village anymore, um, is very much more like a trade show. Right, you show up at the, the village room, and we have a fantastic location. It's literally right next to where you get tickets. So, like, we could not have asked for a better spot. Oh. But, um, you know, we have a corner room, and people can show up, and it's all about the tables for people to have discussions. It's all about the discussions. And we have a few workshops, but we don't have formal talks where we shut down the whole room, and everyone needs to be super dead silent to listen to the talk this year because oh, yeah, that yeah. just kind of kills the vibe. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. Um, so wait, there won't be any formal talks? Well, there won't be formal talks. We're going to have a few where people talk for up to 15 minutes, sort of like to an open standing area. And then we have uh, the ability for people to sit at four tables to do hands-on workshop things. And they have like a TV for that. But it's not, it's not like the whole room is built around seating for watching someone talk anymore. So okay. um, I'm looking like forward to the change of pace. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And um, what different cryptos will be there that we know of? Um, I mean, Monero have a pretty big presence there. Um, Bitcoin will, and Ethereum will have presence just by nature of them being there. There's this one privacy tool on Ethereum that will have representation. And like they, they asked to have a table. And I'm like, oh, this fits the theme of DEF CON you're in. And uh, storage, S-T-O-R-J. Uh, is there and so they'll they'll be you know they'll have a table for a bit too so well and is it going to be very privacy focused you think is that is oh that absolutely like we've gone through great lengths to make sure it retains the you know importance of privacy theme so absolutely very cool i think it's going to be exciting that it's uh different projects there so we get to talk to different people i mean where it's like we're, we're preaching to the choir so often right so it's nice to preach to those that aren't already uh yet maybe interested in monero don't really understand it so i think like i think it's a great opportunity yeah everybody will mingle yeah <laughs> it's good um all righty and we have here mr uh henry fletcher um hi how's it going Hello, guys how's it going i'm not too bad i'm not too bad how are you good 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 uh you want to introduce yourself Yes, uh, obviously, as she said, my name is Henry. Uh, I'm a researcher at the University of Edinburgh, and I am currently finishing my postgraduate. And my entire paper is essentially around the genesis of cryptocurrency, the value that privacy coins bring, sort of where the market's at now, and sort of what the landscape could potentially look like moving forward. And uh, they have kindly uh, invited me on so I could ask them questions. So here I am. Yeah, you reached out to us. You said you wanted, I think, to interview me because you had some questions. I was like, well, we might as well just come on Monerotopia, man. That's what. So anybody's invited to come anytime if, yeah. you, if you want to talk to Monero. Them. So we might as well do this. And my thinking was, uh, hopefully, if, you know, if we have some good detailed conversation, now we'll be sharing it with the, the community at large. So thanks for doing this. Yeah, of course. And thankfully, we have Justin on as well for all all the difficult questions <laughs> for like five more minutes. But yes, oh, no, five more minutes. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have appearance. others from the community. You know, as always, anybody out there in the community that wants to jump on stage at any time, 
whether to ask questions or to share your knowledge, please come on up. So uh, if as you're hearing us talking about some certain topics that you have insight into or you have additional questions on, jump up on stage. So uh, let's get into it, Henry. What, uh, what did you want All to right. Yeah, so uh, I guess the first uh, thing I wanted to bring up is that the you know the original intent that was behind cryptocurrency as a whole uh, is mainly the facilitation of peer to peer transactions, no middlemen, and really the democratization of the monetary system. And I think that that's what really gives all these currencies many different uh, such value, and especially Monero with the privacy features. I think that. However, though, obviously, because of, you know, liquidity and different variables, it has also become a spectacular investing environment, you know, um, and I obviously I do invest myself, so I'm uh, no saint. But I think that when it comes to the actual issue of real peer to peer transactions, do you think that volatility has will fix itself in the long term or do you, I guess, just not see it as an issue at all? Yeah, I think uh, volatility will fix itself as the uh, market cap gets larger. As simple as that, you know, as there's more, more, more users using the system, um, um, the value of the market cap goes up, and it's going to be a lot harder to manipulate the price. I, I think that's definitely the direction we're we're headed in. I'm less pessimistic, or I'm more pessimistic that it'll be resolved in the at least the medium term. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's gonna take um, a long time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. but I, I do see it as a barrier to commerce. At least it's hard to to like you can't print it on a menu, for example, because it's gonna change. So you could adjust it like at a terminal, but it's still it, it's it's volatile. So I don't think most people are gonna use it for for back and forth if they can help it. But uh, for for like a savings account, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I agree with Justin on that. I think, I do think over time though, Justin, what do you think like long term? I mean, you know, I mean, if you were talking about like trillions of dollars, I mean, sure, it would, ideally, in theory, should slow down. I mean, well, like if Monero or just in terms of users, let's say you know we we have a billion people using using Monero on on a daily basis. Um, I would hope I would hope it would slow down a bit, even just for, I mean. With more liquidity, it takes more to move the market, I guess. So yeah, I, I would hope it would slow down. But um, compared to like a euro US dollar exchange rate, like <laughs> I don't, it, it, it'd take a lot to get there. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. I'll move on to the next. So obviously this has been in the news a lot recently. Um, Obviously, in the EU, they put forward that bill really targeting anonymous cryptocurrencies. And I think right now it's just organizations, but I think in the future we kind of know where that leads. And I guess a question would be, in the age of decentralized exchanges and atomic swaps, could Monero actually be, I guess, quote unquote, banned, which is what a lot of uh, regulatory bodies and governments are calling for? Yeah, so uh, that's a that's a good question. I mean, it could theoretically countries can try to ban it. Will they effectively be able to? No, uh, is is my opinion. Um, they can make it very hard for people to use in certain places in terms of it will be difficult for them to obtain it uh, through a traditional exchange. But like you said, you know, uh, decentralized exchanges exi exist, atomic swaps exist. Those things are only going to improve. Uh, and if these act, you know, if governments were to try to start banning it or making it more difficult to use, then these other technologies will, will probably only become more robust and user friendly. And, you know, Streisand effect, you'll have those that will be more intrigued by Monero more than ever as they're hearing news about the fact that governments are actively trying to ban it. They're like, well, why? What, what, what is it about Monero that they don't like? Uh, and it will ultimately turn into more people uh, learning about Monero and uh, those uh, alternative means for obtaining it growing in, in usage would be my opinion. So, uh, effective, you know, they could, governments could 
try to ban it, but effectively, I don't believe they'll be able to, and it might have the opposite effect. You got yeah, so I guess they. <laughs> You got to force their hands by making it so everyone actually are, are using dexes because then there's, n n I mean, you can't cut off what already exists healthily somewhere else. But if you cut yeah. it off and it, it takes some time to move over and people are struggling in the meantime, then it sucks. Yeah. So I think that the biggest, I guess what you're saying is that the uh, biggest thing they could do is more try to regulate it from the back end, from, I guess, the withdrawal to fiat end. But I guess you can't really stop the, the purchase and the trade from coin to coin itself, if I'm understanding. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much impossible to stop to stop people from exchanging uh, crypto into Monero and vice versa. Awesome. Um, and then as well, I think sort of on that note, uh, in the last, I guess, just really a year or so, we've really seen decentralized finance as a whole really pop off. And I guess on the topic of DEXs and things like that, do you think that as the market moves more into DeFi that we will actually see, and correct me if there already are some that exist, but I guess sort of privacy-oriented decentralized finance, financial ecosystems as a whole, such as, you know, obviously a privacy-oriented DEX or privacy-oriented oriented insurance or lending and things like that uh justin you want to chime in on that one but justin i think jumped off oh he did oh. okay yeah no i definitely certainly think uh that's going to evolve and come to fruition 100 percent um I don't know if you're familiar with Havino, which is going to be, you know, a new version of BISC that's going to be Monero based. Um, you have the atomic swaps that we were talking about. We have uh, Thor chain that's going to make it very easy to swap uh, between cu currencies, basically using their protocol. And uh, I can only imagine what else you'll be able to do with Thor chain in terms of decentralized finance. Um, and yeah, no, I think there's going to be a, you know, uh, a sector that's created and that will basically uh, be a place where you can do the things that you're currently doing with DeFi, but in, an, in, in a more private and anonymous way. Yeah, because I mean, from my research, I think the only thing I came across was I think it's called Haven Protocol. And that's not quite exactly a full ecosystem, but they do have some, I guess, similar services. Yeah, Haven is basically an algori algorithmic uh, stablecoin, as far as I understand it. I don't know. I know a little bit about it, but I, I, I do think it's, uh, from what I know, it seems like an interesting project. At least I, I like what they're trying to do. Uh, I do think, you know, that is kind of the holy grail if we had some stablecoin that is somehow truly decentralized. Um, that is private that you know you can move from your you know move your monero into as needed to avoid this volatility that we're talking about which is you know going to exist for some time there's always stable coins everyone What's that? can always do that there's always stable coins everyone can always do that yeah that's what we're talking about we're saying but, um, yeah. chain got hacked the chain got hacked again for eight million again there was 26 million the other week now eight mil yeah, well, yeah. Maybe but Thor. It's getting, it's maybe Thor isn't the one. I don't know, but it's it's yeah. obviously going to be uh, improving over time, right? So as it's getting Monero hacked. is the one. <laughs> oh, Monero's it was one hundred percent the one. Yeah, don't don't disagree there. What do you think of what do you think of Haven? Mark, do you want to introduce? Oh, is it me or is it? I don't know. Oh, XMR jumped don't know. In. We got we yeah, somebody jump in. <laughs> I don't know what Haven is. I've heard one person shill it. Okay, yeah, it's a it's attempting to be a stable coin, a private a privacy focused stable coin. Yeah, I think my understanding of it is that they have like a certain coin, and then you buy, you purchase that, hold it as collateral, and they give you apparent like I don't know much beyond that, but they give you apparently you know like an anonymous stable coin. That's my understanding as far as that goes. Yeah, I mean, me, you know, we were, we were talking about volatility before. Personally, you know, I'm not affected, not, I'm, 
I don't, I kind of ignore that aspect of Monero because yeah. I'm, I'm thinking very long term. I'm very <laughs> invested in this I, very the idea of Monero. Load up wrap prices. What's that? Loading up is so cheap. Yeah, yeah. Loading up, you know, when the price is low, buy more. As it goes up, my Monero will be worth more. And I'm, I'm not, you know, worried about the day to day. Uh, and I'm, I'm fine with waiting to the point of when, you know, when it does become stable enough, that will mean we've made it to the moon. We've arrived. And at that point, uh, digital cash, digital cash for everyone. Everyone has a wallet. Cash for everyone. Exactly, man. So, uh, XMR, we, we have Henry on here and we're, we're letting him ask us questions. So Henry, you want to keep going? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, one thing uh, just not really related to my paper. Just one thing I wanted to clarify because I've been reading through zero to Monero, master Monero, all those goodies. And I, if I'm not mistaken, but is the, is Covery still in effect? Um, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. So is that, is there a new sort of development going on on that end or is that, exposed yeah, i guess there's, to there's users other, IP there's other, uh means so they have i2p is sean coming on sean no yeah sean, sean would, would be good to answer this question but he said he was maybe all right i reached out sean should be coming on but there's essentially a, i you know i don't actively use it in that way but there you know you can use tor and i2p um to essentially do what what they intended on doing with covery yeah okay uh i guess yeah moving forward then so obviously Monero, and the, this is the beauty of it. It's not obvious. Plus and Dandelion plus plus is the uh, other thing, but um, so it's it's effectively uh, the. And my understanding is what what Covery was trying to achieve can can essentially be be done using these other means today. Okay. Okay. Um. So I guess as well. Um, Obviously, the beauty of Monero is that it's not owned by a single entity or organization. So I guess from a community and a grassroots perspective, what's the strategy on getting uh, more awareness and ultimately, most important, getting more vendors uh, throughout the world to accept Monero? Yeah, so it's, you know, a decentralized community. There's no real strategy, you know, that's it's uh, there's no CEO and board members and employees saying getting together, figuring out, uh, you know, what do we do? I mean, we're doing that in a decentralized way, but anybody that has any ideas uh, is uh, can can offer them to the community or just, you know, try to work on that themselves. Um, so like me and Sunita, for example, <laughs> we're doing the show. We do Monero talk in terms of trying to, you know, we use Monero, uh, I wouldn't say on a daily basis by any means, but, you know, we try to, when we're out here in New York, talk to people about it, small vendors. We try to get them to accept it for things. Uh, we're running the gratuitous coffee website where we sell coffee uh, for Monero, or you could pay in other means, uh, but... We prefer Monero. Most people pay with Monero. And then we have the, the, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we have the way where you can essentially send a tip uh, with Monero to the farmers that the coffee came from. So uh, we're hoping to grow Monero that way. Actually, we're trying to um, hook up with other brands, existing brands, uh, maybe start with smaller ones that are more approachable and get them to add gratuitous to their products. So, you, you know, you can tip the Mexican farmer that picked your agave uh, for your, that made your tequila. Uh, so adding gratuit. So another example of a way to, way to start getting Monero out there. And I'm, the, the broader example being, you know, these are just things we came up with that we're doing on a daily basis and anybody else uh, that's, you know, can do the same and just start working on it. Um, yeah. And I, we have we have other ideas as well, but you know this is just me. Like I said, is there is yeah. no there is no collective plan from the Monero community on on, on what the action should be. Uh, everybody should. There's if no they, marketing department. Yeah, there's no marketing <laughs> department. But um, to each their own. <laughs> Monero is great. I describe it as a, an ama like a startup company that's working on an extremely disrupt like maybe the most disruptive 
idea out there right now. It's kind of a dream start. Like imagine you go work for this company. They're trying to disrupt, uh, you know, fiat and uh, you can go work for them. Oh, really? I can? Uh, yeah, but how do you know they're going to hire me? Uh, I don't really have too many qualifications. No, it doesn't matter. They hire anybody. Anybody who wants to work for Monero can work for Monero. Obviously, you got to try to figure out how to turn it in, <laughs> into dollars, but you can yeah. start doing things to help Monero and help the Monero community grow. Mm -hmm. No, no, perfect. Um, and you know, we're seeing real world usage grow, right? So it's also... Monero doesn't need a marketing department. I'm, I'm all for trying to, like I said, actively trying to spread it, but it seems to be working well enough where it fills this use case that really nothing else can do. So people are actually just organically using it. So we see that on the dark web, right? People are moving over to Monero. Whether or not you agree, agree with the ethics of the dark web, it's it's showing proof that Monero works for its intended purpose. Um, but it's, it's, it's gaining adoption there. Pork, pork fest is a real world example. We're seeing people use it. Uh, what is pork fest? <laughs> that was just a, a um, not a conference. It was, a, it? It was a libertarian, <laughs> it was a like libertarian festival, festival that and we, we were surprised on how many people actually like accepted Monero, like just like, you know, buying breakfast, buying, you know, like right. They, they wanted it. The They'd rather get that than fiat. And you know, a, a lot of the, and practically speaking, it made sense to use it over some of the other projects, even like Bitcoin because of the transaction fees, you know, people weren't lightning wasn't really being used there in any way that I saw. Uh, so they're like, yeah, I want, I want some digital cash. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's growing on its own in organically, I'd say for sure. Yeah, I, I do notice as well a lot of guerrilla marketing because I'm based in Scotland right now. And I actually have come across in different cities like Glasgow and Edinburgh, uh, numerous stickers and things like that and flags as well. Yeah, we uh, we see a lot of those stickers around here, too. I wonder who's putting them up. <laughs> I wonder who it is. No. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's a great way. I love seeing seeing that, seeing people do it. Uh, we encourage any anybody who's out there in the Monero community to have the, I think, a sticker telegram. We got a bunch of them, well, for gratuitous because we give them away. Um, we ordered like thousands of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lots. For Dude. gratuitous. Not yeah. For us, we don't, we don't personally use them. <laughs> yes, my entire apartment <laughs> is filled with stickers. <laughs> Um, so yeah, encourage people to buy, buy a bunch of stickers, put them up. It is effective. People see it around, uh -huh. especially if you're, Absolutely. if you're in a major city. Um, I also, you know, I was thinking cause of our, this might be a good time to do it. The last interview we had, I had, uh, last week, I think we just posted it today. Yeah. Um, what was Kevin the, Wad? Kevin Wad, who had reached out. To, yeah. Um, actually, I reached out to him. Monero's liquidity. We're talking about Monero's liquidity. Um, but one of the things we kept talking about is this idea that you know another way to to help Monero uh, is you know take your Monero off of exchanges. People people say it sometimes. Yeah. We need to we remember on this show to, that should be part of our that. our never daily give away thing. Your seeds, yeah, please. obviously, never show anybody. Your, <laughs> right? Yeah, we had a recent uh, you know unfortunate. Somebody that we know uh, lost their Monero because they gave away their seed because somebody on Telegram was posing as um, someone else. Some, somebody else, basically, somebody th they, th they thought the person worked for Cake Wallet and it was just a fake account and they handed over their seed and they lost their Monero. So never ever give your seed to anybody. It doesn't matter who it is they're asking for it. Nobody need nobody needs it's it. Yours any problem forever. you're trying to solve, uh, you wouldn't solve it by giving somebody your private your private seed. Your Monero will just disappear. Um, so remind people of that. And yeah, taking yeah. your Monero off of exchanges, um, pulling it off of exchanges. This this will this will protect you. So, you know, you're now you're holding your Monero the, the, the correct way and it will potentially uh, prevent any manipulation that might be happening on any of these exchanges in terms of kind of selling paper Monero. So Monero, you know, 
people are buying Monero, but they're not pulling it off. So it's 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 uh, we don't know whether or not exchanges and you could watch that episode. There appears to be kind of pretty blatant evidence that it's happening that exchanges are essentially selling paper Monero, and that's you know suppressing the price. So you want you want the price to go up. You want to put buying pressure out there. Uh, pull your Monero off exchanges. Sorry, just thought it was a good time to mention that. Oh no, absolutely no. I, I completely agree as well. It's uh, it's very essential to let people know that. Um, but yeah, because you, you also recently had a talk with Samurai Wallet, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the yeah. Last that was amazing. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Do we just keep going? I guess. Yeah. 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 Keep, keep going. going. Keep going. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I do have one. I know the other fellow left, but I do have okay. one technical okay. question. Okay. Should I throw it at you guys? Or? Yeah, throw it at us. I mean, we'll I see. Mean, it's, not, it's not too technical. But um, so I know that currently, I believe the ring size is 10. And obviously, that is a very, you know, adequate amount of plausible deniability if anything was ever, you know, decrypted. But I guess why not you know 50 or 100 is it a data size uh, limitation or do you guys have any idea for that uh reasoning yeah it's it's uh you know the transactions get heavier with the ring size um so that's really the constraining factor but there's new technology um that's coming out you know that they're looking to implement into monero that will allow us to essentially I think they're saying multiply the ring size by like 10x um oh. and the idea is you know uh eventually it's at some point you you know theoretically it won't probably won't even make sense to increase the ring size anymore because you know the anonymity set will be large enough where you won't really get any additional gain um but yeah definitely now the ring size is low and it, it makes sense to raise it and yeah the design decision is you're you're weighing it against know um, essentially making creating heavier transactions um so as as new tech comes out it will be implemented into monero that will uh, allow us to raise the ring size in an efficient manner that you know essentially doesn't slow down monero or make the transaction sizes too too large um and yeah it's just a testament to the fact that monero evolves and it's not a static thing and it's continuing to improve in terms of how how it functions as digital cash so like i like to say like monero works today as digital cash and it really does like transactions are cheap uh you know they're reasonably reasonably fast you can run it on you can run it on your phone yeah like uh, you know you may have to wait for your wallet to sync but it's usable and when i send it uh it it goes through and it only costs a few cents or a, a fraction of a cent to send and it's untraceable that works today um but with time we're gonna it's you know it's we're gonna need for it to continue to evolve uh so that you know we can send more transactions we can increase the throughput and that's so that we can continue to be fungible uh so that things like ring signatures are uh, um you know, uh, aren't essentially, you know, or additional heuristics aren't gathered around around the usage of Monero, uh, allowing people to essentially uh, unravel and uh, trace transactions. So it's it's a continuous, it's a constant battle, people like to say. And Monero is, it's, I think, evolving in sequence with its actual organic growth. So it's not like a billion people are looking to use Monero tomorrow. Um, so it seems to be keeping up its its technological advancement seems to be keeping pace with its actual events, uh, additional usage, organic usage. Well, the interesting thing as well is that because uh, I am citing a lot of data from different blockchain providers in my paper. Um, and obviously, you can only get so much on Monero because it's obviously the whole point is privacy. But I have noticed that you can actually see just the daily transactions taking place, obviously not the amount or where they're from, but just the transactions taking place. And it is actually increasing regardless of all the, you know, price fluctuations and things like that that we've sort of seen in the second quarter. 
it, you know, evidently from a analytical perspective, I mean, people are using it in day to day sort of um, yeah. transaction. Yeah, the um, you know, Monero looks very healthy given you know the data points that we have when you look at it. Um, like you said, tra transactions just going up over time. More, it's getting more and more usage, and we, and like you said, we don't even know the the amount of volume in terms of value, right? We don't know whether a yeah. billion dollars is being transferred every day, or, or you know, a few dollars. But we know the actual uh, the amount of transactions are going up, uh, and for all we know, it's a decent amount of value that's being transferred. Uh, much unlike the Bitcoin network, where you can see all of that. Uh, but yeah, very healthy, looks very organic usage going up. And we know it's not being speculated that heavily, especially compared to something like Bitcoin. Um, so it's it appears to be uh, resembling real world usage, not just people like moving it onto exchanges and off of exchanges. Um, I think I think it's fair to say that that it, the data is showing that. Mm -hmm. 100 percent. Um, and I know I am asking a uh, biased community here, but uh, what do you see as sort of the future for, uh, I guess, competitors like Zcash, Dash, Horizon, Verge, all those other sort of privacy-oriented coins? Um, where do I think they're going to end up? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think... I think Monero... At, is is really winning um, this this sector of the crypto market, which is digital cash, and I think it has the first mover advantage here, much like Bitcoin has a first mover advantage in being a, a store of value, which is essentially what it's become. Uh, Monero has the first mover advantage in being used as digital cash. It's growing in that in that use. Um, obviously, Bitcoin had first mover advantage there, but Monero has, is, is seemingly beating Bitcoin on that front as more people are moving over and using Monero for things like dark market transactions, ransomware. Once again, whether or not those are good or bad things, it's showing that it fits that niche and it works in that use case. And I think Monero is winning that battle. Uh, when you per currently compare it against things like Zcash or any other privacy coin, it just completely dwarfs them in terms of the amount of transactions. So you would think the Monero would continue to be the king in that in this sector. Um, you know, something would have to happen where one of these other coins is, you know, 10x better at doing what Monero already does for people to start porting over to it. And I don't really see at this point what you can offer that's better than what it's already doing. Yeah, no, uh, I totally agree. I think uh, I think an interesting thing is that uh, one thing that a lot of Bitcoin maximalists sort of seem to forget is that even when Satoshi was creating Bitcoin, a uh, founding principle for him was privacy. You know, he referenced using, you know, an address once using Tor. And I think that Monero just ended up building on top of that and just including all the privacy. So users didn't have to go through those extra steps. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that is actually all my questions. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Was the last? Was there a question I missed there in that last statement you said? I just want to make sure I, I didn't uh, gloss over. Something. Oh, uh, no, that was just yeah, no, that was just a statement, no question. Yeah, yeah. There's some questions in the chat. Though. <sighs> what are people saying? Ah, uh, this was earlier. How do we know some XMR coins aren't being created out of thin air, aside from mining, of course? Ah, you had to read that one. Huh. Um. So you know you can. You can run a, a in the command line of, of Monero. Essentially, you can run a prompt that will show you, add up all the coin bases to let you know how many Monero are in existence. Uh, you know, there's this idea that maybe Monero there could be some kind of secret inflation bug in Monero potentially, um, and it would be hard to detect. Uh, you know, the tr there's truth to that. It would be probably more difficult to detect than with something like Bitcoin. That's, you know, an open ledger. Uh, but the idea is Monero's open source. The code is 
been reviewed many times. It's being reviewed more and more over time. Uh, and as time passes, we're, we're, you're, we're gaining trust in the fact that the code is what we think it is and that it's been properly implemented. So we're, you know, is there some risk there? Yes. That risk also exists with Bitcoin. You also have to uh, trust that the code is correct and that it was properly implemented. Once again, maybe with Monero, it'd be harder to detect uh, something if it were to go wrong as opposed to with Bitcoin. But with Bitcoin, it would probably be just as catastrophic, if not more. There's arguments that it would be even more catastrophic, actually. Um, might be This might be a bit of a stretch in logic, but it actually makes some sense. I mean, uh, with Monero, it would, because it would take longer for that, that information to get out that there is some kind of secret inflation bug, um, it wouldn't necessarily just crash the price because somebody would slowly be taking advantage of that, allowing the information to slowly get out there and then potentially gets fixed, as opposed to everybody trying to run out the door because they all realize at the same time just completely crashing the protocol. Uh, so there would be more of a slow leak that maybe eventually gets fixed. That's, that doesn't sound like you know a, a very uh, you know compelling argument because that you know. Nobody wants that to happen, uh, but there's some logic there. But yeah, overall, um, it's a similar scenario to Bitcoin. It's this open source code that's based on, uh, you know, some some difficult math that I I personally don't understand firsthand. Code that I wouldn't be able to review firsthand. But we're trusting that because enough people are looking at it and that there's enough value at stake that it has been properly reviewed and properly implemented. And over time, we can gain trust in that fact. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another question is, uh, is there a guide, uh, easy steps to start accepting Monero on your website? Meaning just a general. Statement. To start accepting? Yeah, I guess, is there a website like explaining how one can accept Monero? On, on their website? Yeah. If they, I guess, want to start. Um, yeah, what's the business? best I don't know, guide for of, that? I mean, we kind of tried to figure it yeah, out on our own. <laughs> well, we, we are, we're not doing it in a very good way. No. We essentially have people just uh, sending us Monero directly. So they go through our checkout process because uh, yeah, what's it's the all name done of the thing? Manually. What's Uswid? Yeah. So we use this platform no called Uswid. And it. yeah, there's no widget yet, but they're building it. Yeah, they're building um, it. What's, uh, pay pay now yeah, now pay payment now. now payment now payment now payment uh is supposedly building some kind of widget that will be able to uh do it add, automatically yeah. right add in so when people check out it'll be one of the options and it will be built into uh the platform but right now we're kind of doing our own workaround way so people can either check out with you know visa or whatever and then there's a crypto option and if they choose that then we're literally asking them uh we're sending them a sub address for them to, to pay their Monero to. But there are things like Globy. Um, there's other tools out there that you could research for how to uh, accept payments in Monero on your e commerce website 100%. Cool. So, yeah. Henry, what do you, what else you got, man? Did you see um your take on the whole Elon interview? Oh. Remember? Yeah. Did you watch that? Henry, did you watch that? Uh I actually didn't. I personally I don't really I don't really like uh sort of like idols or figures in crypto because I feel like they're just sort of average shows personally. Um I liked uh John McAfee, may he rest easy. But uh other than that, I feel that um I personally, I'll just give my opinion. I think that Elon essentially just used Bitcoin to uh, reach his quarterly targets because he wouldn't have on any sort of atypical tester related activities. So I think that he sort of tweeted that he uh, was into it and then obviously sold like 10% for liquidity. And of course, he miraculously ended up making uh, his quarterly results. But I'm very skeptical on his true intentions because he's also a very uh, big doge chiller. So I'm unsure. Hmm. I think 
I think he literally is just having a fun time with Doge. <laughs> um i think he really understands this stuff well i really do uh he uh, he was describing crypto and bitcoin basically as a you know a, a, a data a data system right so basically and money itself right and that uh the most efficient version of that is something with you know low latency and low error um, and he even said one of those errors being uh, government intervention, right? Because that slows down the free flow of information through this network. Uh, so in, in a couple of ways, me being the Monero maximalist, I, I, heard, I heard him talking about Monero in a few ways there. Uh, whether he, you know, in terms of that, like what Monero, in my mind, Monero doing this better than Bitcoin. Um the government intervention aspect, right? So I, 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 I've described this to people in this form too. You know, it, Monero is really just a communication protocol, or you know, an, some kind of information transfer protocol that's representing money. And I feel like the most fluid version is gonna is gonna do the best. And you know, the fluid in that you know, there's no interruption. So the fact that you can, um flag Monero transactions, blacklist wallets, all those things are going to create friction in, in, the, in the Bitcoin network, not allowing the free flow. Whereas in Monero, things are going to flow freely because uh, it's going to be truly censorship resistant uh, and unconfiscatable uh, because it has this additional attribute, which is privacy. So not allowing people to see the amount of transactions and what's going on. And I think uh, when I when I hear him talk about crypto, I think he's he's there. He's right there. He keeps he keeps parking on that. He said it in the beginning of the interview. I don't know if you noticed, and then he he repeated it again at the end at, as what he really thinks the most important component of crypto is. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll have to uh, check it out. I think another interesting point that you touched on as well, which uh, with Bitcoin is obviously flagging transactions and things like that. Another growing issue is obviously tainted coins, right? Because mm -hmm. you have certain scenarios where I think it's, you know, uh, certain exchanges, if they see a certain, you know, piece of string of code attached to a certain coin, you won't be able to transfer that onto, onto an exchange. And with the Monero fungibility, I think it just it gets rid of all that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 100. Monero doesn't have a history. Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin. Any Bitcoin you send, you receive, send, unless it's, a, you know, straight from a coin based transact mm -hmm. mining transaction, every single Bitcoin has a history attached to it, has a transaction history. Whether that transaction history was mixed up so, in some fashion using some additional technology, every single Bitcoin comes with a history that can be viewed and looked at. Whereas with Monero, it does not have a history. It's almost like Bitcoin in many ways is almost more ideal than like just like a typical centralized financial system. You can really, it's very easy to trace through the blockchain exactly just sort of the, the route, right, of uh, where, it, where it, you know, came from point A uh, all the way to point C, you know? Yeah, it's perfectly traceable. Um, arguably, I you know, I think that's a flaw. I mean, I guess for things like, you know, if governments are going to be using it and, th you know, there's arguments to be made that that's that's a good thing, right? We want we want to see how governments are are using uh, you know our tax dollars and where instantly know where it's going, how it's going to be used, and perfectly audible, so we know you know there's there's no debate there. So uh, that that use case makes sense, but to have an entire economy run on that, I don't think makes sense because now you're creating. Um, an unfair uh, advantage for those that are able to trace the transactions the best, whether that be a government that can now misuse that power or a corporation that can misuse that power to their own advantage. Uh, whereas Monero will level the playing field and you you know nobody's going to have any additional advantage or be able to use that information against others. Uh, so it's going to allow commerce to flow freely. So Monero will be, you know, the, the my hope is the the coin that people will want to use that uh, 
many companies will probably want to use and maybe bitcoin becomes more of you know government coin yeah well i think as well i mean i know at least in europe there's a lot of talk around central banking coins i think the only country to do i think is china with the digital yuan. but i think that yeah i mean for obviously from a perspective of the individual if they are, if it is a transparent coin, you know, it would be great to see where actually our taxpayer dollars are going. But uh, I'm not sure the government would be too willing to uh, reveal that because I think it might even cause more uproar once people actually do see. But um, yeah, I think it uh, very, it very well could be as well. Somebody's saying, why pick on Bitcoin <laughs> so much? It's all public blockchain crypto uh, that has these issues. Yeah, sure. All transparent monero doesn't have these issues that's that's her point um <laughs> but we're saying you know bitcoin i'm not saying bitcoin is is useless uh i just was describing a way could, you know, <laughs> that it would make sense for for knowing how governments are using our their money um but yeah no bitcoin and also i mean bitcoin is going to be the the greatest on-ramp probably one uh, to Monero, you know, it's, it's serving that it's like kind of the tree trunk that's attached between the, the, the crypto world and the fiat world and fiat is going into, into Bitcoin. And then it's going out from Bitcoin into projects like Monero, you know, you want, you want it to be flowing through Bitcoin first, uh, as opposed to going directly from, well, you, not that you want it to, but it's going to naturally happen that way because that's the unstoppable route, right? So they could stop fiat into Monero. It's, it's, they can make that difficult, but they can't, as we were talking earlier, they're really not going to be able to stop crypto into Monero. And so Bitcoin is going to be a, a, an amazing on-ramp for people to the Monero world. Yeah. I think as well, just from a, like a community and a social perspective, you know, everybody really just like the first thing they hear about. I mean, maybe now it's different. Maybe it's Doge. But I remember when I first heard about crypto, it's always Bitcoin everywhere you went, right? Always Bitcoin. And then, like you said, I think as people more enter that sphere, right? And then each people are, you know, they're unique individuals. And some people head towards privacy coins. And I think that, yeah, like you said, it's the perfect, really the perfect on-ramp. Exactly. We got another question here. What is the best way to get a non technical people to believe in the supply audibility i mean i think i basically answered that question at length that's the same you know whether you're technical or non-technical it's just, it's the same answer i mean non-technical people shouldn't really you know why are they believing in bitcoin why what why are they try do they understand bitcoin do they know that it can't be 51 percent attack do they like understand the you know no they're they're not technical people they don't understand bitcoin but for some reason, they're they're willing to to trust it. Uh, they're trusting that others th that are intelligent have looked at it, especially because the fact right, it has a large market cap. You have Michael Saylor putting a lot of money into it. All right, so they trust it because these other people trust it. Um, with Monero, same thing. I mean, uh, so I mean, the 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 argument to make to a non technical person is all right. If you if you trust Bitcoin then you should theoretically be able to trust Monero, um, you know, trust that technical, if you, if you think the facts are there, that it's, you know, a large enough project that enough intelligent people are looking at it, uh, that it's tested enough, then it's basically that same concept here. If you're okay with Bitcoin, you're okay that it's been essentially tested enough. And with Monero, a non-technical person needs to make that judgment as to whether or not they think this open source project has been tried and tested enough to the point where some kind of flaw like that wouldn't exist. It's like, why trust a Tesla? You know, the example I give <laughs> when you get into your Tesla and you put it on self drive mode, why are you trusting that? You know, it's the same thing. You're trusting the engineers behind it, you're trusting that it was implemented correctly. So, Bitcoin, you also have to have that trust because if there was some implement and there's bit there's been bugs in Bitcoin, it's it's happened. So we know it can happen and we know it can happen again. Uh, with Monero, there's some possibility too, but you need to you need to do the research around 
what you can figure out, which is are enough smart people looking at this and is, is it a large enough project uh, where you can uh, have a reasonable amount of trust in the fact that it's been properly coded and implemented? I think bring CT as well. It's it it's uh, one of its uses is specifically to fix that problem. No, to fix the audibility problem. Uh, well, it's to um, yeah. Bring CT. Yeah, well, because if I'm not mistaken, what the ask is the asker was sort of asking something bridging off the previous question about how do we know that no coins been minted out of nowhere? Correct. Right. And ring confidential transactions. One part is the Peterson sort of commitment that is based off of where everything has to equal zero. And that's how they know that nothing was fraudulently spent. Right, right. So you have to you have to trust yeah. that confidential transactions mm -hmm. was properly developed by Greg Maxwell and these other Bitcoin guys, uh, super smart guys that you know, are behind that are high in Bitcoin, and then it was taken by the Monero community. There, our devs looked at it, decided to implement it. You have to trust exactly. You have to trust that that that's all correct. That that math works out. It was it was coded correctly and implemented correctly. Yeah. yeah all right. Thanks. Was just tuning in. Great answer. Yeah. All right. He liked your answer, <laughs> or she, I don't know. Mirror World Labs. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the question. <laughs> anybody else want to jump up on stage before we uh, call it a night? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hold on. Another question. How can Monero be used as digital cash when you have to wait 26 minutes before you can unlock your funds and spend them again once received? Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. <laughs> that's, a good that's, question. That's, a, that's a hiccup. That's a hiccup. Um, when you uh, receive funds, it, your Monero gets locked up. So, I mean, we personally ha have been able to use it despite that uh, with, with selling coffee and buying things, uh, especially with, with selling coffee because we're just receiving Monero. Um, but it's certainly an issue. Totally agree. Uh, my understanding is that it is being worked on and there's proposals for how uh, it can be that that can be eliminated without going into technical details. Uh, but it's not some critical flaw that won't be fixed. So short answer. Yes, it's a problem. But, but two, it. <laughs> it, it will be fixed is I, I think it will be fixed. Yeah. Um, on a side note, uh, we got our sneakers. Yes, I know. I was wearing them. <laughs> I, the yeah. Day. Have you worn yours yet? No, I haven't yet. Uh, we had. Yeah. Where your sneakers? Show them. Show, show <laughs> I don't have people. my sneakers. I don't no. know where your sneakers are. Just so people can see. Oh, they're right there. I'll be right back then. Because <laughs> you have to see them. They came out really nice for those that have been tuning in for other episodes. <laughs> yeah. And the. Thing with the sneakers is the guy who was providing them kind of disappeared for a few weeks i think i don't did how did howard ever get his sneakers i don't know i put it on the reddit post telling yeah him he got them. well he so we're selling these on gratuitous oh yeah maybe i should go close yeah. no, i can hold right. it there i don't know if people could say it's got the, the i'm a fan they're really nice. And the white ones, like for girls or whatever, I got the and white then, ones. And then we have the the tip address on the back where you could tip the general dev fund if you want. Because the whole thing with Monero is you could send send a tip. So we have send a tip to the people. Well, we don't have it where you could tip the people that made the sneaker. Although <laughs> that is that is the, the grand vision with, with Gratuitous. You'll be able to, so instead, um, we're just doing where you can tip the, the devs, which is cool. But the sneakers but are totally they came awesome. out really nice yeah. yeah and the white ones so i mean yes it took like maybe like two and a half months to get them but i guess <laughs> he pulled through <laughs> i'm Brent, sure so he as, disappeared as more and orders still... come in if you want them uh we'll, i mean you we'll have to be patient <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping uh, we'll get back to me but uh and we'll be wearing them to yeah, vegas we're gonna wear them to vegas Sunita, are you gonna go to Sunita has white ones and yeah. i have black ones 
Yeah, oh, really nice. I'm very excited about them. We'll be rocking it with our hats. Our hats. <laughs> so we're going to be very Monero ish e. And right. our shirts. Got to represent. Yeah. Yes, you exactly. Gotta um, are you going to DEF CON? Oh, no, you're uh, actually. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in Europe at the moment, but um, in the future, absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool conference. We went the last time. So. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, and we did gratuitous over. That's when we first had. <laughs> Try that's when we had the Brazilian coffee yeah. beans, and then we but now we'll try it again. Now we're gonna try it again with the Guatemalan beans. <laughs> <clears throat> It'll be fun. <laughs> but uh yeah, I guess uh let's call it a night or a show. So yeah. yeah. Henry, we're gonna wrap it up. You got anything else to uh throw out there? Um I guess uh, since people are listening, I definitely would want to say shout out to the Monero subreddit because uh, I've been spamming it for the past few months just about really technical questions and everybody's been extremely helpful. So that'd definitely be a closing remark. And of course, uh, once again, thanks for uh, having me on, guys. It was great. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is what out. Monero Talk awesome. is all yeah. about. Yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. reaching out. Awesome, man. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I guess before we end, I just want to say thank you to our sponsor, Vic and Cake Wallet. <laughs> For sponsoring the show and uh i guess uh yeah we'll wrap it up <laughs> all right it's a wrap guys it's a wrap uh thank you guys for tuning in and till next time take those Bye. Moneros like off your exchange yeah. take it off the exchange <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah exchange. do it right now and make sure to like the episode subscribe to our channel if you haven't and the usual spiel go to gratuitous.org if you want to get some delicious guatemalan coffee it's really good all right bye guys ciao